Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and today I'm going to be building a survival rifle. Most of the time when you think about a survival rifle um, or survival firearm, um, you're going to think of a couple different calibers. You're going to think about a 12 gauge, probably a shotgun of some sort, or you're going to think about a 22 long rifle. That's what most people's go to is. Um, and I have done the 12 gauge option and it looks something like this. This is an H&R single shot 12 gauge that I have hacked the barrel off and put a new bead sight on it. And now it's got about a 20, I believe it's 22 inch barrel as opposed to the 28 that it had before. So I've shortened it significantly, added a small one inch piece of webbing sling on there. So it's very simple. And I've, oh, I've also put a, a synthetic stock on there, aftermarket synthetic stock. So it's, and then slap some paint on it. So it's kind of impervious to uh, the elements now, or at least a little bit more. Um, and I like this setup a lot. And if I was going, if I was going to pick a firearm to take into the woods that was almost guaranteed to get me some small game, if not big game, um, it would be a shotgun because I've hunted a lot. I've hunted my entire life. I've hunted with a bow. I've hunted with 22s. I've hunted with shotguns um, for small game. And by far the most productive that I've been has been with a shotgun, especially with squirrels, things up in the trees, um, arboreal type creatures, if that's the word that I'm looking for. They're moving, they're jumping through the leaves and stuff like that, especially if you're going in the early season. And it, hitting them with a 22 is very, very challenging. Hitting them with a shotgun is not that big of a deal. You can usually make it happen pretty quick. However, the flaw with a shotgun is this right here. So that is the problem. That is a two and three quarter inch 12 gauge round versus a 22 long rifle. And I think it's pretty clear to see the difference. Um, the size, the bulk, the weight, it's all tremendously different and you can carry a significantly, significant amount more um, 22 long rifle than you can with a 12 gauge. And a 22 can take care of just about everything around here from a deer, not legally of course, but can, in a survival situation, screw it. Um, you can take down the deer to the squirrel whatever. So um, I think that's what I'm going to work on today. And I'm going to put together, this is a, this is a Henry lever action. And also when it comes to survival fire, firearms, I without question will choose something with a, what I would say is a manual transmission. Um, it needs to be a lever action. It needs to be a bolt action, brake action, single shot, whatever it is. It, it's got to have a manual transmission, something that I can force even when it's dirty because in a survival scenario, your firearm is probably not going to be as well maintained as you had hoped it would be. I love the Ruger 1022s. I think they're fantastic, but as anyone can tell you that's shot them a lot, once they get dirty, they start to jam up a little bit and they become more like a single shot anyway. So um, I like lever actions for that reason or bolt actions. So I'm gonna see what I can do with this, this Henry here. I've already made the sling. This is a paracord sling that I have woven and turned into a pretty awesome sling actually. And now I've got, man, I forget how much, how much, uh, how many feet of paracord that is, but it's a lot. And it could go a really, really long way if you were to um, uh, break it down and need that cordage for some other purpose. So there's step one. I guess maybe I could do a video on that one day on how to make a sling like that. So, but anyway, let's get started. Hello, Scruffs. Kitty, kitty. Meow. Come on, kitty. <laughs> the nicest cat ever. Kind of crazy, but nice. So this is a beautiful walnut stock on this Henry lever action here. And, I, you know, a lot of you watching this are probably going to cringe when you see what I'm about to do to it. But, uh, and I, I'm in the same boat. Uh, <laughs> it's very beautiful and I don't want to mess it up. But, but... At the same time, I'm not a collector of things. I, I use things, and this stock is going to be sacrificed. I'm going to um, modify it and paint it up and all that good stuff. But the beauty of a wood stock is that you can easily create cavities inside of it to allow you to store survival-type gear.
So I'm gonna see if I can get this compass on here. I just gotta make sure, I'm pretty positive there's no metal anywhere on this stock, with the exception of that. Um, and just confirming that this needle is pointing north. It is. When I spent a month in the swamp of Louisiana with no tools, no tarps, no knives, no nothing, um, Rick Spicer and I had a lot of time to think about things, and we both came to the conclusion that in that long-term scenario, that long-term survival situation, there's one thing that we would take with us if we could if we could pick anything. It wasn't a knife. I would take that knife and I would chuck it into that swamp. Um, it wasn't a lighter. It wasn't a, it wasn't even a tarp. It wasn't a metal container. It wasn't all the things that you would typically think of as your kind of one tool, your one item that you'd select for a survival situation because we could we could make all of that stuff happen. We could make a cutting implement. We could make a shelter. We could, you know, devise ways using our creativity and our skills to create all of those things that we needed. Um, the one thing that was just, just outside of our grasp was food. Collecting enough calories without some sort of um, weapon of sorts is so hard. You know, you could build traps, you could build snares out of primitive natural materials and all of that, but they're just not that effective um, as far as gathering real food. If I had something like this rifle, we both agreed, if we could take one thing, it would be either a 22 long rifle with as much ammo as we, we could carry um, or a 12 gauge. So while you're just sitting there, guys, watching me piddle away at this, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, and leave us a comment. Today's comment is 22 or 12 gauge. There's no outliers. You can pick one of those. That's all you get. You get two choices. 22 or 12 gauge. And why? That's, that's the biggie. Why would you pick one over the other? All right, so what I want to do here is get this wire saw out. I mean, yes, it'd be nice to have the wire saw in there, but more importantly for this specific application, I want to have a way to lubricate my firearm. And what I'm going to do is just use this straw that the wire saw comes in. Take the wire saw out. Make sure there's no holes in the tube, because it did have a saw in it, of course. This is just some three-in-one multi-purpose oil, but works fine on a lever action. And I'm gonna fill this up. With some oil. And that is more than enough oil right there for to keep the gun operational for a long time. All right, so I'm having a hard time getting this to seal up. I'm well, almost certainly it's because I've got oil on the inside of the straw there and it's not allowing it to seal very well, but that's okay. I've got plan B. I'm going to take a couple of pins, maybe something like this pin here, and then I stole this from my daughters. Don't tell them, whatever you do. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is just try to make myself a small little capsule. And I've decided to leave the, leave the Little Mermaid intact on the oil reservoir just for fun. Because who doesn't love the Little Mermaid, right? Now I've got myself a leak-proof 
oil or reservoir that I can use to maintain my rifle. Now I had the idea while I was using this X-Acto knife here to um, work on the stock, I'm gonna try to put this actually in the uh, stock of the rifle as well. I'm gonna have to shorten the handle obviously to get it to fit in there easy enough. But then I've got myself an extra blade that I could use for skinning squirrels if I should need it or cutting cordage or whatever you may need a scalpel-like blade for. Um, and also the back of this, if I should decide to put a ferro rod like this in the stock, I will have a way to strike the ferro rod because everybody knows that without a striker, a ferro rod is not much use. I mean, you can find rocks, but they don't work that great, so. Look at that. So now, got ourselves a small, very compact little blade with a handle. So now that we've got our holes bored in there and all of our kits set up, um, I need a longer drill bit to fit more ammo in there. I just don't have one at the moment, but I'll pick one up and I'll make that hole just a little bit deeper. But for now, all I can really fit in there is about four, almost five, but not quite. Fit four rounds of 22 long rifle ammunition. So another good feature of any survival firearm is that it's capable of being taken down easy and reassembled easy. And I feel like this one fits that, fits that bill just a little bit. I mean, it's not perfect, you know, you gotta remove a screw. It's not as easy as some, you know, factory survival rifles might be, um, but it breaks down to a fairly small package and this could be slipped into a pack pretty easily. And, you know, just like with the survival knife, everybody says, well, you know, what's the best survival knife out there? The best survival knife is the one you have. And if you're not carrying it, chances are you're not gonna have it in that survival situation. So, I mean, honestly the best survival firearm is probably going to be the pistol that you carry on you all the time but it's fun to work on projects like this anyway so i'm going to hit this with just a little bit of sandpaper uh this is probably like 220 grit something like that uh, something like that just very lightly just to rough the surface up a little bit so the paint will adhere just a little better Let's rub this down with alcohol, get any oils off of there, then the dust from the sanding process. Get that cleaned up. Maybe do this twice or so. All of you wood stock, walnut stock lovers out there cringing at the moment. <laughs> Most of the stuff that I put in the rifle can be get can be had from Wazoo Survival Gear. So go to their website. It's in the description, and I've also provided a discount code twenty twenty one on three. The number three, not spelled out. So storm's coming. Um, but so check out that stuff in the description, and we'll finish this thing up here in just a few. All right. So we put our sling back on. This is Savannah. She is my new cat. She's our barn cat. She kills rats and mice. All right, so we've made a couple of modifications. I'll show you what we all, what we've loaded up in here completely here in a second. But uh, my good buddy Jason came over. He's the one holding the camera right now. <laughs> hey y'all. And he has, he had an amazing idea. So what if you don't have a multi-tool in your pocket? How are you gonna access all this stuff in, in the rifle? Chances are I'm gonna have a multi-tool, but what if you don't? What if I wear a hole in my pocket and it falls out or something? Who knows? I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna attach this to the sling somehow, but I need to give myself some sort of handle and I thought duct tape wrapped around there will probably give us enough grippage and it will um, and it'll also, you know, be duct tape and you could burn it, you could use it for 
you know, patching holes and things, repairing clothing, gear, tarps, ponchos, whatever. Rolling. Rolling on the roll of tape. <laughs> you see, <laughs> see what you did there? See what I did? Yeah. All right, so we're rolling. I'm gonna put a, a fair amount on there. Here we go, so I've got a mini roll of duct tape, Phillips head, and flat head screwdriver, which this rifle unfortunately requires both. Probably, I could probably even get another little little space in there to put some water purification tablets. That wouldn't be a bad idea. That Or tape one of the Wazoo water kits to the sling. That might be, if I had a spare one, that's what I will do, actually. I'll tape one of the Wazoo um, water kits to the sling. It, it, maybe two, one on each side of the sling here in the middle somewhere. That would be perfect. Somewhere on the bottom here. Most of the time I carry muzzle up. If it's raining or something, I might go muzzle down, but for the most part, I go muzzle up. So I'm thinking right in here-ish. I'll just tape the crap out of that thing. All right, so I could use my handy dandy duct tape screwdriver here that I've got secured to the sling, but I don't want to undo that unless I absolutely had to. So I'll use the multi-tool that's probably going to be in my pocket anyway. And let's see what we've got in here. Before we get into here, I've got a handy dandy compass. Let's see if it works. Maybe. Yep, there we go. And it is pointing north. That's awesome. Pull off the butt plate. And in the back here, we've got quite a few things to work with. Um, just dump them on out, I guess, see what falls out. I've got a cleaning brush to clean the action if it needs it. A couple rounds came out there, and I've got a small ferro rod. I've got a fishing kit slash sewing kit came, that came from Wazoo. Got a sewing needle in there, a couple safety pins, and um, you know, a couple hooks and some sinkers ready to catch some fish. I've got quite a bit. I do not know the exact length of this cordage. This came from Wazoo as well. Um, this is braided fishing line. Really, really strong stuff that I can use for all sorts of things. One of them being a boar snake to clean the um, rifle itself. Got a quick tinder tab that's kind of mangled and mashed up there. A another quick tinder tab that's not so mangled and mashed up there. I've got a tiny roll of duct tape that's a little bit tough to get out unless I use either the pliers or perhaps the screwdriver that's on the sling. But if I pull that out, it's attached to one round of 22, and the rest come falling out there. So I've got one, two, three, six extra rounds right there. Obviously, I'll have all the ammunition on my person, 15 rounds in the rifle. I've got a small little tube of oil to keep the rifle lubricated and working properly. Um, let's see, what else do we have in there? Oh yeah, my blade. I've got a small little razor blade exacto knife here with a really, actually pretty sturdy handle. Um, and I can use that to strike the ferro rod, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, I can make some stuff happen. And then uh, there's like, you know, two, 300 feet of paracord right here, which is awesome. So let's take it out to the range and shoot it a little bit, see how she handles. Another thing I don't think I mentioned was on a, um, on a survival rifle, it, what I deem a survival rifle, I talked about having a manual transmission, something that you actually have to do, it's not a semi-auto, um, is iron sights. Uh, you can have an optic on this if you wanted to, but you have to, in my opinion, have backup iron sights at a minimum. My eyes are still pretty good. Iron sights work really well. I can shoot them pretty accurately. And uh, that's what I like to roll with because it's just simple, robust. If you drop it, bang it, you're probably not gonna mess them up as easily as you would an optic. And for a survival rifle, I think that's the way you should go. So for you safety sallies out there, we're going PPE full time right here, guys. We're going big safety glasses. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you on the next video.